Good morning all. Welcome to Edmonton Baptist Church and to our Sunday service. It's good to be here. Warm greetings to those of you at home watching on YouTube and later in the week other platforms. And again, greetings to us assembled. We are assembling. Even as I speak, I can see people coming in. Um, just two notices this morning and one uh, sad bit of news. Uh, many of you may remember Keith Reader, a very strong Christian man and a stalwart of Edmonton Baptist Church. Um, sadly, Keith passed away this week, Wednesday, aged 92. Um, over the years, he served the church as a deacon. Um, he was the church treasurer and um, also a moderator at a time when the church had no minister. So he has served us well, and we are sorry to hear of his passing, but we rejoice, we know that he's gone to be with the Lord. And I ask your prayers for Irene, his widow, and the rest of the Reader family as they seek comfort during this sad time. Also, um, a reminder for church members, this week, Thursday the 27th, will be our church meeting, the May church meeting, starting at 7 o'clock on Thursday. It will be via Zoom. If you wish to attend, please contact the office to let them know, and the Zoom details will be sent out to you. So I greeted you once, and now I greet you again because it's a special day, and special days deserve special attention, special greetings. So warm greetings in the name of Jesus. The special day is Pentecost. It's Pentecost Sunday, and it's the birthday of the church. It's the birthday of the church. It's the day when the promised gift of the Holy Spirit was given to the apostles and the crowd of people that were with them. And we know, we read, and we will read today that the Holy Spirit came like a rushing wind and tongues of fire descended on, on, on people. And they were people from all over the world, different um, countries, different languages, and yet they could understand each other. So our first... Um, item this morning is going to be greetings from the body of Christ. And we are wonderfully blessed at Edmonton Baptist Church to have a slice of heaven, to have people from all the nations worshiping peacefully together, for we are one in Christ. And so I'm just going to do a short paraphrase of Acts 2 verse 9 and um, Galatians 3 verse 28. And you will see the, the paraphrase when the reading is done. We are from Iran. We are from India. We are from the United Kingdom. We are from Jamaica. We are from Guyana. We are from Ghana. We are from Nigeria. But praise God, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so we're going to hear now from the voices of the body of Christ. It's going to be different languages, and I'll just go through the list, and then you listen and see who you understand or what you understand. So there are nine voices that you will hear, and uh, it's Farsi, Iran, Tamil, one of the languages of India, English, Hungarian, Spanish, Jamaican Patwa, Portuguese, Swahili, and Yoruba. Praise God for his blessings. May we hear the greetings, please. Greetings are coming. People are coming from afar. We're hearing the voices, the voices of the body of Christ. Um, we are blessed to have many people from all over the world. Good morning, 
هیچ چیز قصه نخورید برای همه چیز دعا کنید و هر چه لازم دارید به خدا بگویید و فراموش نکنید برای جواب دعا از خدا تشکر کنید கிறிஸ்துவுக்குள் அன்பான சகோதர சகோதரிகளே உங்கள் யாவரையும் கட்டாக்கி ஏசு கிறிஸ்துவின் நாமத்தில் பேப்டிஸ்ட் திருசபையில் நடைபெறுகிற ஞாயிற்றுக்கிழமை ஆராதனையில் பங்கேற்கிற அனைவரையும் இயேசுவின் நாமத்தில் வாழ்த்தி வரவேற்கிறேன் சங்கீதம் தொண்ணூற்றி ஒன்றில் எழுதப்பட்டுள்ளது போல உன்னதமானுடைய மறைவில் நாம் இருப்பதற்காக நாம் கத்தரை ஸ்தோத்தரிப்போம் அவர் தமது சிறகுகளாலே நம்மையும் நம்முடைய குடும்பத்தையும் பாதுகாப்பதற்காக கத்தரை ஸ்தோத்தரிப்போம் கர்த்தர் நமக்காக யாவையும் செய்து முடிப்பார் Pace și bine ați venit la serviciul nostru de astăzi. Astăzi sărbătorim primirea Duhului Sfânt. Ioan 14, 15, 17. Dacă mă iubiți, veți păzi poruncile mele. Iar eu îl voi ruga pe Tatăl și El vă va da un alt apărător, care să fie cu voi în viață, și anume Duhul Adevărului pe care lumea nu îl poate primi, pentru că nici nu-l vede, nici nu-l cunoaște. Voi îl cunoașteți, pentru că rămâne cu voi și va fi în voi. Amin. Bun dia, hermanos! Bienvenidos a todos! Hoy celebramos el nascimiento de la Iglesia, el día en que nos fue dado el Espíritu Santo. Que Dios los bendiga! How you do? You're hearty? Welcome to the service. At the church birthday today, you know, Pentecost Sunday. May glad to gather with everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Bom dia, irmãos em Cristo. Hoje é domingo de Pentecostes e é o aniversário da nossa igreja. Amen. I'm Jambo. Tu na wakaribisha katika kanisa letu la Edmonton Baptist kwa ibada ya leo ili tushiriki pamoja. Karibuni. Asanteni sana na Mungu awabariki. Kujumo ati amujuba ojo Pentecosti uliwafuani emesho kan pia nsheshe inoti igoke onu Jesu Kristo lua aushe opolo kwa adula yo ame. Good morning and happy Pentecost Sunday. May the love of God unite us as we remember the Savior Jesus Christ's ascension and the gift of his Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, if you thought some of the voices sounded familiar, you're not wrong, because these are our friends from this very part of the kingdom in Edmonton Baptist. So it might be a little, um, a little game to figure out who was speaking. Uh, we did, I'll just repeat the languages. There was Farsi, Tamil, English, Hungarian, Spanish, Jamaican, Portuguese, Swahili, and Yoruba. So there you go, that's your assignment. And I just want to acknowledge that people have made an effort this morning. I can see um, different dress. I see Romania, I see Jamaica, I see India, Guyana, um, Pakistan. Pakistan, yes. So we're all out. I wonder if the camera, Trinidad and Tobago is waving at me. Yes, yes. I wonder if the camera can just pan around. Um, maybe just the backs. People may not want their images. Nigeria. There we are. Wonderful. The Spirit of the Lord is with us, and it is, it is great that we can celebrate together as one. And we mirror this across the world. Thousands and millions of Christians are meeting this very time, as I speak, to glorify God and to rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Now, please stand. We're going to affirm our faith in the Lord Jesus. Please stand. The words will come up very shortly and we will read together. And it is good for us as a body of Christ, especially on a day like today, to stand together and to say to each other, to remind ourselves 
what we stand for and who we believe in. Our expression of faith coming up very shortly. But it's wonderful to see us all. I, I think our numbers are increasing. The front bit of our sanctuary is full and I believe the other extension is opening. Right, so here we are, our, aff our affirmation of our faith, we will read together beginning. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, shown to be from God by his signs and power, handed over to us in the plan of God, crucified by our sinful hands. We believe in Jesus the the exalted by God from the dead, freeing him from death's power, for death could not hold him. We believe in Jesus the exalted, ascended, ascended to, to the, the right hand, hand of God, God who, who received, received from the Father the, the promised Holy Spirit, Spirit and has poured this Spirit on his people. We believe, we, believe, we, we repent. repent. We receive, we receive God's, God's forgiveness. forgiveness. We, we believe. believe. We, we rejoice. rejoice. We receive God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit. Now we're going to have um, two songs, two bits of music to continue with our worship. The first one is uh, Holy Spirit Inspire Us Again, which is a quieter song, and I ask you to sit. The lyrics will come up and just to meditate and to think about the special gift that we have, and in fact, all of the provisions that we have from God. The second song, Let Your Living Waters Roll Over Me, I will ask you to stand. So we're going to sit for the first one, and the second one I will indicate to stand. Thank you. Holy Spirit, inspire us again. Holy Spirit, inspire again. Come revive again. Breathe your Flame burn 
Let your living waters please stand. And thank you, Julia, for leading us again. Please stand. Good morning, church. Shalom Aleichem. That wasn't too bad. Let's try it once more. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. That's Hebrew for peace be with you. Amen. Amen. I just thought as we're using the diversity of language this morning. Yes, indeed. Because after all, Hebrew is going to be the language of heaven, right? So we may as well get learning. <laughs> your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. Jesus, Jesus, And yes, that's definitely worth applause. Let us um, cheer on the, the, the Church of God. And now we've got a video, a short video, that tells the story of Pentecost, and then um, later on we'll have the reading. So may we have the video, please? And you will see you've read the passage, and it was described graphically, and now we have the video.
On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen! Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Such will be saved. Such a reassuring ending. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to have our intercessory prayers, and we have a, a group of four people leading the prayers. It will be apparent what they're praying for as they come up. So one after the other, starting with Freddie, Kodjo, Bridget, and Andrea. Thank you, Freddie. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this new day. I thank you that you love us and are with us every day. We thank you for your protect, protection and, and care over our families. Thank you for, that you forgive, give us the power to love each other. Bless our families. Dear God, we commit to you those in our families who have fallen sick physically and mentally. We, help, we believe that you are our healer. May you be the comfort and remove all the worries. I pray for the families who, lo who lost their loved ones once in this pandemic times. May you comfort and strengthen their families. We pray that their souls through God's mercy may rest in eternal peace. I pray for children and young people exploited and abused by others, those unaware of danger, those unsure who to trust. I pray for their rescue from the darkness of deception into a safe and supportive relationship. I pray for children and young people who are ridiculed and bullied, those afraid of going to school, those who cannot voice their unhappiness. We pray for their burden to be lifted and the light of your kingdom to come. Loving God, be our guide, bless and protect us. May we grow and flourish in, in the beauty of the world that you have made. I pray for children and young people to know that your goodness and provision. I pray they would place their identity in you. I ask that in the pressures of life, we would know you are our rock in which we can stand. I pray that through the challenges of school life, exams, and future decisions, you would lead us, guide us, and bring us comfort. I pray for all poor and neglected children. Bless them and please put your arms around children and families so they feel comfort and hope. Bless all the people who help them, help and give support 
to them. I pray for the world and the countries su suffering from the pandemic and also conflict in Israel and Palestine. May your word bring peace to end the war. You hold our life together with your love. You are above all things. Align our desires with your desires as we build our lives around you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is a prayer of intercession for world peace. Let us pray. Lord, after you've created the heavens and the earth, you declared that it was very good. But when Satan, the father of lies, deceived mankind, evil and wickedness entered the world. Part of this are conflicts and wars, nation at war with nation and conflicts in all forms are prevalent even in families all over the world. Millions are killed or maimed because of wars. How evil can man be against their fellow human beings. Lord, you inspired your servant Graham Kendrick to write these words. Oh Lord, while precious children starve, the tools of war increase. Millions of dollars are wasted on wars whilst children in poor countries go hungry. We call upon you, Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace to come and bring peace to this troubled world. We remember particularly the Middle East. We thank you, Lord, for the Egyptian brocade ceasefire from the 11 days Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We pray, however, that your covenant with Israel will be established because you are a covenant-keeping God. The word of God says in Matthew 5, 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Thank you, Lord, for the people you have appointed to work tirelessly for peace. You remember Mema, where the army is still in control. You remember Afghanistan, where with the departure of the American army, the threat of fear and instability caused by the Taliban is so real. Remember, nations are still at war, but are not in the news. Lord, have mercy and intervene in all these situations. For the many victims of wars, we pray that they will receive the help needed to rebuild their lives. The Bible God says in John 14, 27, peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Because we pray in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus, the one who was, who is, and who will forever be. And all God's people say, Amen. We continue to pray, to pray for our sick, bereaved, and um, spiritual healing. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for your comfort, for those suffering. Lord, lend skills to the hand of healers and bless the means used for their cure. We pray for such confidence in the power of your grace 
that fear loses its grip, that they may put their whole trust in you, in weakness and, pray, and pain. Lord, we pray for your presence to be always near. Oh, Lord, sustain us by your grace that our strength and courage may not fail, that our strength and courage may not fail. Heal us according to your will and help us always to believe that what happens to us here is of little account because you hold us in eternal life. Look upon us, Lord, with eyes of mercy. Jesus, we pray for your healing hand to rest upon us, for your life-giving power to flow into every cell of our body, into the depth of the soul, cleansing, purifying, restoring to wholeness and strength, O oh Lord. God, you are our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Remind us that we are more than conquerors and that we can do all things to Christ who strengthens us and that with Jesus by our side, all things are possible. Merciful Jesus, you are the joy of our heart, the author of our hope and the object of our love. As we come seeking healing and restoration for our world, for people, for diseases and viruses, show us your mercy and relieve us from our fears and anxieties. Grant us a quiet heart and a mind, an expectant mind, O oh Lord, that by the assurance of your presence we may learn to abide in you, O oh Lord and God. We just want touch from your mighty creative hand. Jesus, you have healed the sick and raised the dead. That is the amazing lordship that you have over all the earth. You are powerful in your redeeming love. How great was that sacrifice to go before us and bring forgiveness and hope. We declare today that we believe for us, for our families, for our loved ones, for our world, according to your word, that by your stripes we are healed. Standing within your reign and rule, we are restored. May life and wellness grow in fullness until it overflows. Our Father, bless those who mourn with the comfort of your love that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship and their lives encircled by your love. Dull the pain, Father, with your love, blur the sharp edges by reminding them that you hold time within your hands and see it all from beginning to the end. You are the great physician, Lord, and we pray that angels of mercy to be dispatched to shower your comfort and healing because only you can mend and bind and heal the brokenness of our hearts. Give them the strength, Lord, to look forward to better times. Lord, lift their eyes so that they may catch a glimpse of eternity and be comforted by the promises of heaven. We surrender, Father, today to you everything that we are and we strive to be. We invite your Holy Spirit to dwell in us. We offer to you our life, our heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit, Lord. We surrender to you our past, present, and future problems. We ask you to take hold over every aspect of our life. We surrender to you all our hurt, our pain, our worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, Lord, and we ask you to wash us clean. We release everything into your compassionate care. Please speak to us clearly, Lord. Open our ears to hear your voice. Open our hearts to commune with you more deeply. We want to feel your loving embrace. Open the doors that need to be opened and close the door that need to be closed. Set our feet upon the straight and narrow road that leads to everlasting. In, precious, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.
Father, as we pray for the persecuted church, Father, we pray for protection, we pray for hope, and we pray for courage. Father, we pray for Christians across the nations who suffer from persecution for believing in Jesus. We pray, Father, that you will strengthen their faith as they persevere and revolve in their hearts to never give up. We pray for those who have had to flee for their lives and reside in other countries. We pray for your protection, Father, over their lives, over their families, over their businesses, jobs, and churches. We pray for those who are in authority in every country, especially those in power where God's people suffer injustice and violence. We pray, Father, that you will move in their hearts and enable them to govern with justice so that every citizen can live free from harassment and fear, free to worship as individuals or in church, community, and share their faith with family and friends. Father, we pray for Turkey. We pray for God's encouragement for Christians, Father, as they are just 1% of the population. We pray for Christian leaders and teachers to give their time of putting together programs that will bring many to Christ. Father, we pray for the Holy Spirit anointing in the ministry that is going on in Turkey. Father, we bring before you Colombia. We pray for those Christians who have been kneeling in the streets, praying for peace, holding prayer vigils. Father, we pray against police brutality for an end to violence and for tolerance and understanding. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones during this unrest, that they will know your comfort and your peace. Father, we pray for the protection of Christians who are in danger from criminal gangs since their conversion because the enemy stronghold is being broken down. Father, we bring before you India, and we pray for the people of this land as they continue to cope with the ravages of the COVID pandemic. We pray, Father, for your mercy to cover each one of them and that the many they will come to know you and your son as their savior. Father, we pray for Israel. We pray, Father, for the nation of Israel. We pray for peace of Jerusalem. We pray for an end to the current violence, and we pray for Palestinians and all conflict in the Middle East. Father, we pray for Iran. We pray for the many Christians imprisoned for their faith in Iran, that you will comfort and sustain them, especially those who are held in isolation and face torture at the hand of the prison guards. Father, we pray for protection of secret church leaders, that they will continue to be strong in building the kingdom of God. Father, we pray for Sudan. We pray for the government who are struggling to uphold the freedom of religion and beliefs because there are many challenges from extremists. Father, we could go on and on and pray for hours for all the persecuted church. But Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Father, for the church because they are saved. And we thank you, Father, that all over the Middle East, you are revealing yourself to those who are seeking you through dreams, the witness of the gospel, to satellite TV and the internet. And those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness can be filled. We pray that more individuals will be raised up to disciple those who are coming to faith in Christ. We pray for those who have come to faith from Muslim backgrounds that they may know they are not alone. Father, open doors for them to meet other believers that they will be protected from family members and the local community who object to their change of faith. Father, we pray for their encouragement and determination to serve Jesus despite the risk. May all those who seek the Lord never be put to shame. Let those who find Jesus continually say, the Lord be magnified. Amen. And we continue in prayer, thanking God for the gifts that come into this community and for other Christian communities. Our Father and our God, thank you for your many blessings. All that we are is of you, and all that we have is from you. Today we give back a portion of what you have given us. 
We pray, Father God, for your continued provision and provision also for those who have nothing. Use our gifts, Lord, to your glory and for the spreading of the gospel of Christ. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We welcome Julia again, and she's going to lead us in song. Now, this, this is um, Hebrews. Is it? Hebrews yes. Song. And uh, it's uh, Hallelujah Adonai. Please forgive me. Well for... done. 10 out of 10, Beverly. Right. So we will join in spirit and hum behind the mask. Adjust your mask and hum nicely. Thank you, Julia. Um, let's just practice the words. Uh, let's say them together and then we'll sing the song and you're very welcome to stand when we sing it's a lively song Hallelujah Adonai Kol Goyim Shebechuchu Kol Haumim Ki Gava Alenu Chazdo Veyamet Adonai Leolam. And the translation is, O oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye peoples, for his loving kindness is great towards us, his truth is everlasting. And I thought it was a very appropriate song, just a call to worship all nations, praising the Lord. So let's stand. <laughs> Hallelujah, Adonai, kol goyim shebechuchu koha umim ki gavara lenu chastove amet Adonai leolam. Let's sing that again. Hallelujah, Adonai, kol goyim shebechuchu koha umim ki gavara lenu chastove amet Adonai leolam. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's change the words. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's try again because we've got all the words there on different slides. So let's go back to verse one and then we'll go to the chorus and then we'll go to the English. Hallelujah, Adonai, kol goyim shebechuchu koha umim ki gavara lenu chasto veyamet Adonai leolam to the chorus. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his loving kindness is great towards us, his truth is everlasting. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his loving kindness is great towards us, his truth is everlasting. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Well done, everyone. Wonderful. Please take your seats. Well, I hope you feel that you're on a, a musical journey, different countries of the world. Not many people are traveling this year, but we have traveled, and what a joy it is to travel in the house of the Lord. I'm going to ask uh, Elizabeth to come and read our Bible passage, and that will be followed by Pastor Stephen bringing the word. Thank you. To 
Today's reading comes from Acts chapter 2, and I'm reading verses 1 to 13. And I'm reading from the New International Version. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, it's great to see you all here today. We look forward to uh, taking our masks off before too long, don't we? And uh, it's very difficult to tell from here whether you're happy, sad, joyful. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that you're joyful and you're happy to be here. Amen? Yes. Wana Safui! Ah, there's no Swahili speakers in the church at the moment then. That's praise the Lord. So, Wana Safui! Amen! Hakuna mungu kama wewe. There is no God like our God. Wana safui. Amen. Mungu aku buiki sana. May God bless you. That's my contribution to uh, Pentecost today. Uh, I'm an honorary Tanzanian. But this shirt, uh, some of you will remember the story I told you last year. I'll just very briefly say, this is not typical British men's wear. Uh, we are normally in grey or brown, uh, but this is something I may or may not go out in public in, but it was given to me by a Congolese doctor over 20 years ago, I think now, and he came to our church and he was in a desperate state because back home in the Congo, he uh, had no medical supplies to treat people, uh, he could only help people who needed blood by giving them blood that he probably knew was infected with HIV. Uh, he was desperate. But he gave me this shirt, and on this shirt is Jesus is Lord in many different languages. And so I wear it with a certain sense of pride. When he went back to the Congo, it wasn't very long before he passed away because he himself could not get medical treatment. So I remember him with love and affection. And I say that especially today because in DR Congo today, as if they haven't had enough trouble with the ongoing conflict there, there has been a volcano and over 3,000 people have had to move away from their homes into neighboring Wanda. So we do want to pray for those people today. And of course, Sir Adolf will be holding a service here later on today from the Congo and many people uh, from the Congo here this afternoon. So please pray for that country. We are one family in Christ, aren't we? And we stretch from every generation and every nation of our world. So Pentecost Sunday it is, God's gift poured out on all who believe. 
I want to thank Beverly especially. She's put in tremendous work and prayer and planning to lead this service today for us and a joyful celebration. As I listened to that opening uh, greetings from around the world at my desk on Friday, I was close to tears. It was so lovely that people in their own languages were welcoming other people to our service today. I hope you really felt the blessing of that. And she's created a bit of a party atmosphere, despite the masks. We've got some wonderful people here in their national dress. And we've got Frederick there, who looks like the Sultan of uh, Omar or something. Uh, very, very regal in his national dress from Pakistan. And uh, it's great to see Jamaicans here and people from in Romanian national dress. Uh, all kinds of different folk here today. It's wonderful a party atmosphere. And in a way, that's exactly what Pentecost was. That first day of Pentecost was a glorious party because God was pouring out his Holy Spirit onto all believers, filling them to overflowing. It must have been an incredible occasion. No masks there. Dancing and shouting and singing. It must have been a wonderful, wonderful occasion. And for the apostles, uh, it must have been amazing to have been with Jesus physically as he did his ministry on the earth. Again, I can't imagine that. We talk to Jesus in our prayers. We, we hear him speaking to us from the scripture and into our hearts. But those first apostles had that amazing experience of being with the physical Jesus as he did his miracles and uh, preached his gospel. But then... He had gone away again, hadn't he? And he was no longer there with them physically. Uh, but even better than that, on that first Pentecost, as God filled them with his Holy Spirit, Jesus came to live in them. And that's the wonderful thing about Pentecost. From now on, Jesus would be with them all the time. Once, if they hadn't been with him physically, he'd have been somewhere else and he wasn't with them. Now, because the Holy Spirit had been poured out onto all believers, Jesus would be living in them. And wherever they went, Jesus was with them. Do you know that if you're a believer today? If you love Jesus today, do you know that he lives in you? Isn't that a wonderful thing? And it doesn't matter whether you come to church, you're not leaving Jesus behind here when you go home. He's going to be in you at home. He's going to be in you when you travel to work. He's going to be in you wherever you go because the Holy Spirit was poured out on all believers so that Jesus could live in us all the time. That's something to be excited about, something to be joyful about, isn't it? And there was excitement and anticipation and joy. Well, why did God throw this party? That's a very good question, isn't it? Um, I'm sure there's going to be a few parties thrown as we come slowly out of lockdown. Uh, we've seen some of those on the television already. But why did God throw this particular party on this Pentecost day? Well, there had to be a party because it was the day that the church was born. The church was born on, Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost. So there had to be a party. It was an amazing event in the history of the world. The church was born. And it was God who threw the party. It all happened 50 days after the Jewish feast of Passover and 50 days after Jesus had risen from the dead and just 10 days after Jesus had been exalted and taken back to heaven. We talked about that last week. Possibly in a large upper room, the apostles gathered together with 120 believers and they were praying and waiting, not knowing what was going to come next exactly. They were waiting and praying. What were they waiting for? Well, you may or may not know that the book of Acts that we have heard read to us this morning was written by the Apostle Luke. And he also wrote, of course, Luke's Gospel. And at the end of Luke's Gospel, before we come to Acts, as Jesus was about to leave this world and return to the Father in heaven, he said this, and I myself will send upon you what my Father has promised, 
but you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. Well, what was this promise of the Father that they had to wait for? So why did God throw the party? Because the church was born that day. What were they waiting for? They were waiting for a promise that God had made to them. What was that promise that the Father had promised and that they had to wait for? Well, it was the Holy Spirit whom God had promised would come over 800 years before through the prophet Joel. We read, Afterwards I will pour out my Spirit not just on some individuals, but on all believers. Your sons and your daughters will proclaim my message. Your old people will have dreams and your young people will see visions. At that time I will pour out my spirit even on servants, both men and women, and all who ask the Lord for help will be saved. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. That was the promise God had made through the prophet Joel, about 800 years before the day of Pentecost. And now the wait was over. Have you ever had to wait for something? Some of you children, <laughs> maybe like uh, in August or September, you think your mum or dad says, what, what do you want for Christmas when it comes? And you say something wonderful you'd really like. But then you have to wait ages and ages, don't you, between August all the way through to December, and you think, when is the waiting going to be over? And then on Christmas Eve, you can see all the parcels there under the tree, and you still can't open them. You still have to wait. And you're so excited, and you just the wait seems so long, doesn't it? And now, for the people of God, the wait was over. God was fulfilling his promise. The Holy Spirit filled them all, and it was party time. Looking at you now, it doesn't look like a party. You've all got your masks on. <laughs> You're all sitting quietly. I, I increasingly hear that you are singing behind your masks and uh, soon no one will be able to stop us, will they? Because we'll be singing out. Wouldn't it be joyful just to see everybody's faces singing praises to God? And we can have our own party then, can't we? Suddenly they were out on the streets. They were making noise. The believers were all speaking at the same time. Wana Safui! Mungu Kama Wewe! Mungu Akubuiki Sana! Karabuni! You think, what is he talking about here? But they were all speaking at the same time and there was this lovely, amazing party atmosphere. The people around all gathered to see what was going on. And this was no ordinary party though, was it? Where the excitement and noise often comes as the drink begins to flow. No, these people were not drunk. There was no alcohol at this party. This was a supernatural event. It was a supernatural party and it was God who threw the party. He filled all the believers, all those who loved Jesus with his Holy Spirit and they began to talk and they began to talk loudly and joyfully and shouted in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak or so Luke tells us. So why did God choose Pentecost to bring his church into being? Well, very simply, because this was the Jewish feast that attracted the most numbers of people from many different and faraway places to meet in Jerusalem. There were people from all kinds of areas and regions and nations gathered in Jerusalem. That's why God chose to put the party on and to bring his church into being. So why, you might ask, what is so important about that? Well, to answer that, we have to go back to what Luke tells us at the end of his Gospel and here at the beginning of Acts. In Luke chapter 24, it says this, And in his name, the message about repentance and forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And then in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witness for, witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
Uh, I remember, oh, many years ago now, going to India for three weeks with an organization, a Christian organization called Tear Fund. And on the first Sunday I was there, they said, oh, you're going to preach in uh, this slum in New Delhi, the biggest slum in East Asia it was then. And uh, I went in there and I, I went into this, oh, it was an amazingly... It's hard to describe. It was just a, a tiny place with dirt on the floor and chickens running around. And people were very, very poor because there was no water in that slum and no sanitation. And uh, there I went to preach the gospel to tell people that their sins could be forgiven and that God had prepared a place for them in heaven if they put their faith in him people from every nation, the gospel for every part of the world, every people group, every nation. And on the day of Pentecost, God brought the church into being so that the message about the repentance and forgiveness could be preached and taken to every nation. And God gave his spirit to fill every believer, to give them boldness and to enable them to fulfill that, that task, to be witnesses in every nation. And if you look at the context of Joel's prophecy, it's interesting. It talks about the Holy Spirit being poured out uh, at some day in the future on all believers. But if you look at the context of that prophecy, you'll see that it's about repentance and faith. Um, so when the 120 believers were filled with the Holy Spirit, God enabled them to speak in tongues. Well, you might say, Pentecostal heaven, they're speaking in tongues. No, not that. What they said and shouted out and sung out were not unintelligible sounds or even some secret angelic language. What they were shouting and singing was an amazing declaration of the great things that God has done, it says. Uh, when I shouted out to you, Buana Safui, uh, unless you came from Kenya or from Tanzania or from Congo, you wouldn't have had a clue what I was saying, would you? When I saw I'm telling you, praise the Lord. But if you come from Kenya or if you come from the Congo, you could say, praise the Lord. You'd hear me speaking in your own language. In other words, they were telling the story of Jesus' death and resurrection and how he has won forgiveness for their sins and eternal life for everyone who would turn to him in faith. They were boldly and joyfully speaking out the gospel of salvation. Well, you might say, what's supernatural about that? Well, the 120 people were speaking the gospel of God's saving love in languages they had not learnt that's just amazing, isn't it? I think I told you a story once about a man who was traveling on a train and uh, he was praying and there was another man in the carriage and he was praying in tongues and uh, he was, thought he was just worshiping God and as he spoke uh, and worshiped in tongues, the other man in the carriage said, excuse me, sir, do you know that you are talking about Jesus in Russian. And I am from Russia, and you are telling me what God has done for me. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> no, he may have thought he was speaking an, an angelic language. In fact, God had given him the ability to witness to this Russian man in the train carriage with him. That's exactly what happened at Pentecost. At Pentecost, they were enabled by the Holy Spirit to communicate with people from every nation that were gathered there in their own language to declare the gospel of God's salvation through Jesus. That was a miracle. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. It was a miracle of grace. The church over centuries has been obsessed with the gift of tongues. It still is. All these hundreds of years later, all we ever seem to talk about and argue about is the gift of tongues. 
We'll talk about that later in another week. But the gateway to power, we say. The badge of office for real Christians. The sign of a second blessing. Really totally twisting and distorting the real reason that God poured out his Holy Spirit on us. These first believers were filled with the Holy Spirit who gave them the ability to speak in known human languages which they had not learned so that people from every nation could hear the gospel in their own language and could respond in repentance and faith in Jesus. Salvation was poured out as the Holy Spirit was poured out on the believers that day. And the evidence of the Holy Spirit in believers is not tongues, It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is a passion that compels us to share the gospel with others. God's message of salvation, so that they too might be saved from hell and for heaven. That was the miracle that was going on on that day of Pentecost. As God filled them with the Holy Spirit, their hearts exploded with the wonderful declaration of the gospel of salvation for all. They didn't know they were speaking those languages, but the hearers heard. Why did God throw this party on the day of Pentecost? Well, we've said already, so that people gathered in Jerusalem from so many different nations would hear the gospel and then take that message of salvation back to the countries and the places from which they came. You know, for many weeks now, Andrea has been highlighting a different flag from our wall here in the church. And if you don't know by now, but you should do, I'm sure you've heard this a hundred times, those flags represent people from the different nations that have been passing through our church over the years. Some of you are still here and your flag is there on the wall. We're a church that has people from many, many nations. It's a wonderful privilege. People from every nation who love and worship Jesus as Lord. And it's a witness to the world, isn't it? And uh, it's incredible, you know. You can take your gospel message of salvation. Some of you can take it to Pakistan. Some of you can take it to Nigeria. Some of you to Jamaica. Some of you to Romania, to Bulgaria and Hungary, to many different parts of our world as you speak on your telephone to your families back home one of our very much loved couples in our church here sadly have had to go back to Sri Lanka this last week because they have to go and live there for we don't know how long to look after Sanjay's mother and we're not going to see them for a long long time because of that but hey isn't that wonderful the gospel message is going into Sri Lanka through that, through, through Ren, who's a, a lovely Christian young woman. And we're so thrilled. Yeah, we have lost them for a time, but they've gone into another place to share the gospel with their family and their friends and their neighbors. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. This is God's plan, isn't it? If you read Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 12, is a wonderful picture here we think that Pentecost was a great party but here in the new heaven and the new earth that God will take believers to it says after this I looked and there was an enormous crowd no one could count all the people they were from every race tribe nation and language and they stood in front of the throne and of the lamb dressed in white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They called out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne, the elders and the four living creatures. Then they threw themselves face downwards in front of the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honour, power and might belong to our God forever and ever. And all the great crowd shouted, Amen. That's some party, isn't it? It was a great Pentecost party that God threw on that day. The church was born. Believers were filled with the Spirit who gave them boldness to share the gospel and declare God's praise. But the crowning glory of that Pentecost day, of that Pentecost party, was not party bags to take home with you, (laughs) not glorious food to enjoy for the next 10 days as you took it home with you, but 
It was this, that filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter, Peter the Apostle, who had denied Jesus three times not so long ago, stood in public in front of all these gathered people along with the other 11 apostles and he preached the first gospel sermon for that gathered crowd with clarity, with boldness, with joy. What a wonderful thing it was. And as he preached, and let me say this, you and I have never converted anyone to the Christian faith. We have never persuaded anyone, however cleverly we've argued, that they should become Christians and that this is the reason and this is the history. We have never convinced anybody to become Christians. It's only the Holy Spirit who makes that final link. Isn't that true? And so Peter preached this amazing ser uh, sermon filled with the Holy Spirit and the gospel just oozed out of him with clarity and boldness and joy. And as he preached, the Holy Spirit moved in the hearts of those who listened. And as Peter concluded his sermon, we read this. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. It had got from their ears right into their very, the very heart of who they were. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do to be saved? How can we be right with God? How can we be right with God? Tell us. You know, in the days of Wesley's preaching, he would preach in the open air and people who were on their way to the mines to work would fall on the floor because the Holy Spirit would convict them of their sin. Wesley didn't do it. Wesley just preached the gospel faithfully and the Holy Spirit fell on those people on their way to work and they were on their knees crying out, what can we do to be saved? Oh, don't be long for that again, that we'll see in our nations people falling on their knees and say, what should we do to be right with God? The world is in such a mess. How can we find peace with God? Peter answered them, each one of you must turn away from your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what happened next? <laughs> We're all sitting on the edge of our seats now. What happened next? Well, it says many of them believed his message and were baptized. He says many of them. That's a little bit of an understatement, isn't it? Because on that day, 3,000 people were added to that first church that had been born that day. 3,000 people. How many are we here today? With all these COVID restrictions, perhaps there are 50 of us today. Imagine 3,000 were added to our church today because the Holy Spirit touched people's hearts and they said, what can we do to be saved? And he said, each one of you must turn away from your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 were added to that group that day. And if you read just a few verses on in the book of Acts, there was another 5,000 added in the next couple of days. And it says there were 5,000 men, which probably means that members of their family were also brought to faith in Christ. What an amazing party. What an amazing end to a party. This church that was on day one of its life, suddenly there were 3,120 believers. And after the festival was over, many of those would be going back to their own nations and regions and sharing the wonderful gospel of Jesus. My word, what an amazing event this Pentecost was. And God has sent his Holy Spirit on all who repent of their sins and put their faith in Christ. And he's filled us with his Holy Spirit so that we can be his witnesses wherever we go, in every nation, to every person, so that all might turn from sin, find salvation, glorious salvation in Jesus. And our little glimpse of heaven here this morning is people from many different nations who love Jesus in the same way. And in heaven, we're going to get on with all kinds of people from countries we've perhaps never even heard of. Um, we're all going to be there worshipping Jesus because of this wonderful gospel of salvation. Uh, are you looking forward to that?
be wonderful, wouldn't it? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I pray your Holy Spirit will be moving powerfully in our service today. Lord, despite not being able to see behind the masks, not being able to see through the lens of this camera, who is listening to this sermon today? I just want to say to you, if you are not a Christian, you might have heard the story of Jesus before, but if you are not a Christian and you know that, I cannot persuade you to give your life to Jesus. But God can persuade you. His Holy Spirit wants to open up your heart so that you cry out to him, what can I do to find peace with God? Turn to Jesus. Repent of your sins. Call out to him and put your faith and trust in him. And today you will be born again. Today you will be part of that kingdom where one day we're going to have the most magnificent party we've ever had. Heavenly Father, please take these words. Each one of you must turn away from your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I pray that this will reach somebody today, either in this building or wherever someone is watching this service. Lord, that your Holy Spirit will move powerfully. And Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to move upon those of us who are already believers, that the Holy Spirit will fill you afresh now if you're a Christian and give you a passion again to share the gospel and great joy that you are on your way to heaven because of what Jesus did for you. Lord, build us up, fire us up, fill us afresh, we pray. And Lord, a special word, Lord, today for those who are living addictive lifestyles, for those of you who are addicted to gambling, for those of you addicted to alcohol, for those of you addicted to drugs, for those of you addicted to anger, anger, for those of you addicted to money and the acquisition of it, God says you are slaves of these things. But today, if you open your heart and say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit, may this addictive behavior be broken today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, where there are sisters and brothers in the same family who have not spoken to each other for years, Heavenly Father, you want to say to them, open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Lord, and let healing take place. And Lord, we pray finally, those who are suffering physical illnesses, mental anguish, Lord, set these people free. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. As always, much to think about. May we rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit and exhibit the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, humility, and the others that I can't call, re quite recall at the moment. But may we live in the Spirit and show people that we are children of, of God. We're going to have our final song, Bind Us Together, and it's one we've sung before in these recent times. It's that school choir from Qatar. Bind us together, bind us together in love. Bring us together in unity, in peace, in joy, and humility.
young and old, middle-aged, different countries, different backgrounds, but the kingdom of God is for everybody. Bind us together. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Give us strength, give us power. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Make us one, sisters and brothers. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Give us your strength to share your truth. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Send us out to live for you. Amen. And can we stand now to share the grace as we end the service and go our separate ways? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in peace, have a wonderful week, and we will see each other, if not in person, we'll see each other on Zoom or we'll hear each other on the prayer meeting. Go in peace. The Lord be with you. Please let us sit and wait for the ushers.